Okay, now that we know roughly how this uh, heterostructure works, let's focus on devices, which I think are much more interesting. Um, and in particular on the HEMT, which is the high electromobility transistor. Uh, this is a cross section, it's a very general one. Depending of, uh, on where your high electric field is, then you would uh, design um, a proper, proper uh, structure with um, uh, properly designed field plates. Uh, but in general, what it is important to know, um, this is the main structure you start from. So what you have is a fourth terminal device. You have source and drain, which are ohmic contacts, a substrate contact, and you have a short key gate. Uh, it's a heterostructure base, as uh, we have seen. It's a normally on device. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with normally on, normally off uh, definition, but normally on means that uh, without applying any voltage, the channel is already formed. So, and it's here. So if you have any voltage applied on the drain, you will see current flowing in the device with zero bias on the gate. And uh, this is something that uh, people are working in uh, circuits do not like too much because uh, they might have a circuit for zero, for zero bias applied if there is an overshoot on the, on the drain. Um, and the distance, the, the high electric field is generally um, um, it, uh, it, it, it stays between the gate and the, and the drain, so this is the drift region of, of the device, it's a lateral structure. So let's try to understand um, uh, bit by bit what, um, what is, uh, this device is made of. We have field plates, you're familiar with the field plates. Um, the way in which they are designed really depends on your structure and where the electric field is formed. Uh, the, where the high electric field is um, uh, is which it, um, in most of the structures is uh, on the drain side of the gate contact and close to the drain contact. So these two are the critical points. And most of the times, indeed, what you have is a um, field plate on the gate, uh, which um, is extended from the gate to the drain, and an extra field plate on top, uh, connected to the source on top of the gate. In some cases, it's not always the case, but in some cases I've seen um, field plates on the drain as well to the re release the pressure of the electric field on the drain uh, side. Um, passivation layers, um, it, we know why we have passivation layers. One reason is because we need to create field plates and uh, so we need them uh, to, uh, to release the electric field and to improve the offset performance of the device. Um, another reason, and you will see why again in a, in a bit, is to release um, the first layer of passivation is as shown to give better properties to the surface of the device. So if you have a passivation, the properties of this passivation will affect the properties of this interface uh, top layer, which in this case is a gun cap passivation. Uh, so it's a very important and crucial layer. And uh, the second uh, passivation three is just simply a final passivation of the device, which is typical of every kind of device. The most common material used is a silicon nitride. Uh, with different growing technique, either low pressure or uh, plasma enhanced CVD. The gun cap, we mentioned it already. I think now it, it becomes clearer why we have it. Um, in uh, off state, uh, we don't want any current going through the gate. If you have a layer of uh, gun cap, this is how it is called, um, you have um, you block the leakage going through the gate. Um, but we have seen that there is a trade-off to that. The thickness, typical thicknesses, I think I didn't write them here, and um, typical thicknesses are in between three and seven nanometers, no more than that, otherwise you kill the two-dimensional electron gas beneath. The Allen gun heterostructure, we know why we have it there. It's because uh, we want a, a high uh, electron density in the channel given the piezo polarity of the, of the material. The thickness of the, of the algon, as we've seen before, uh, will um, define uh, the value of the 2 deck concentration you have. Buffer. This buffer layer that you see uh, between the gun and the substrate is a very important uh, piece of the design of the material. Unfortunately, power devices, people do not the people that design devices do not have access to this layer because it's really a secret of the foundry. 
and they are very uh, careful not to disclose anything because it's what um, will uh, determine the properties of the gun. And uh, the purer the gun layer is, uh, the better the electrical properties of the material will be. And um, this depends on the disbuffer layer. And the reason of that is because you have, if you are talking about silicon-based galonitride devices, so grown on, the, on a silicon substrate, you have to adapt the properties of the silicon to the ones of the gun in order not to have any any defects in the in the gun. And the buffer is what it is doing uh, this. It, 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 it's grown for that purpose. Um, uh, sorry. So there are several ways of having this buffer layer, and one is you can have a single layer of aluminum nitride or aluminum gallium nitride, but this is not the most popular at the moment, at least from what I know, because given that it's a secret most of the uh, of the times. And uh, another way of doing it is by creating a super lattice structure, which means you have several layers of gun and algan one on top of each other. Another one which I didn't mention here, which I've seen actually uh, myself, is um, you have um, um, a, a first layer of aluminum nitride and then the aluminum fraction, which will decrease um, towards uh, zero to adapt the aluminum nitride to the gun. So you'll have several layers of algan with decreasing amount of aluminum concentration all the way from aluminum nitride to the, to the gun layer. And it, it seems this uh, protects the gun from the uh, problems at this interface. Substrate, um, we have we have different um, possibilities to uh, as a substrate: uh, sapphire, silicon carbide, and silicon. Uh, for each of these substrates, I, I I put down some pros and cons. Uh, for the sapphire, it's very good because it's semi-insulating. So can withstand uh, high growth temperatures and it's relatively cheap. Uh, it has a low thermal conductivity and large lattice mismatch, uh, which means that when you grow the gun on top of it, it, it has um, the mismatch in uh, temperature coefficient does not create um, issues within the, the, the gun layer. Uh, the, the silicon uh, carbide, uh, the silicon carbide uh, substrate has a high thermal conductivity, which is one of the uh, very good properties of silicon carbide in general. Uh, so you won't need external uh, heating for uh, lowering down the temperature of the device. And it has a low lattice mismatch, but it, it has, uh, it's quite expensive. And the silicon, it's our favorite one, and it's the only way to uh, convince people that gallium nitride can replace actually silicon because of the cost, because of the cost and the know-how related to this uh, technology. So uh, what uh, my research and my group and most of the groups are uh, focusing on at the moment is gallium nitride on silicon uh, because of the cost and uh, the, the availability of large diameters of, uh, of substrates. Uh, however, the, 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 the problems with this substrate is the la large lattice mismatch and large uh, coefficient of temperature expansion mismatch. And this is why we have the buffer layer, though, to alleviate this problem. Operation mode of the device. We have um, four bias conditions. One is uh, zero bias. Uh, nothing is applied uh, to the device. We have um, the channel is formed, we said is a normally on device. Nothing is pretty much happening. Uh, on states, um, keeping the gate at zero because the channel is already formed with zero bias on the gates, uh, increasing the drain bias, we have current flowing into the devices. Of course, the gate bias has to be higher than threshold voltage, which will be negative, and lower than the shot key turn on voltage because this is a shot key gate. So if you increase the voltage uh, above the opening, the voltage which determines the opening of the shot key contact, you will have uh, current flowing into the gate, which you clearly don't want. Uh, off state, the gate has to go lower than the threshold voltage. Values of threshold voltage for this kind of devices are of the order of minus two, maximum minus three. So if you put the gate at minus five, minus seven, uh, you have your device uh, in, uh, in, in off state, so you deplete the channel under the gate. 
And uh, of course, blocking modes, we are talking about very high voltage on the drain and uh, uh, gate at negative bias, uh, biases below the threshold voltage. What happens in this uh, situation is that the two then um, get depleted from the gate to the drain, into the drain, as you increase the drain um, bias. And um, I think it's worth mentioning that, as you see, all the charge is confined in the two deck. So to switch that off, to deplete it, and to form the channel, is, everything is extremely fast. It doesn't involve any injection or a removal of carriers in a depletion region. It's, it's extremely fast switching uh, device. Okay, so before starting, I just want to spend um, a few more minutes on the on the structure and the operation of, uh, mode of the structure. So I don't know how clear it is the fact that when you have a channel already formed, you need to apply a negative bias to the pleats, the negative charge underneath. And um, uh, so as we were mentioning, we have already the channel there. We had to apply a negative bias on the gate. Uh, to, uh, here it is, to switch it off. This will deplete the channel beneath the gate contact and will therefore uh, cut the connection between the two-dimensional electron gas which is present from the gate to the source, uh, source and the one between the gate and the drain. So for any drain voltage applied um, you shouldn't see any current flowing into the device unless it's leakage current and we will see where it comes from uh, in a while. So if the drain bias is very high, you have depletion of the two deg also in the drift region, which is the one going from the gate to the drain, up to the point at which all the two deg is, uh, is depleted and the electric field uh, uh, picks um, most of the time is next to the, yeah. to the drain. So uh, between the gate for a 600 volt device, it's in um, between 10 and 20 microns. It depends on the doping because you do have some p-type doping for avoiding leakage from the source to the drain, uh, punch through leakage that we will see. Uh, uh, generally, it's 15. I would say it's in between, really in between 10. It's a little bit uh, shorter. And uh, why the the gun is the, the, it doesn't reach 10. 10 is too big because the thicker it is, the lower is the two deg concentration. So it's between 3 and 5, uh, 3 and 7, I've seen 7 as well. And the algan is uh, between 12 and 22, I would say. 18, 19 are typical values. So they're very narrow. Yeah, very narrow, yes. And the shot is the gauge? So the dimension of the gate is one micrometers, the gate itself, and in general the field plate, it's uh, one, two micrometers, one, 1.5. It, it really depends on your electric field, though, uh, how long this uh, field plate is. But it's in between one and two. The, the on-state resistance is given by the true deck. The, the, the entire true deck. The on-state resistance is given. It's calculated in as a yeah from the from the two deck. Yes, which is uh, depending on the thickness of the layers above yeah, and, and the aluminum of fraction. And, the, the and if you have any doping in the structure, which you do. P-type, we'll see it later, because you want to block the leakage current from the source to the drain. Okay. With this okay. structure, let's say, with this okay. structure, it's only the, the, the two-deck. It's the two-deck, and that's why it's very low, because uh, you have high-density uh, channel, electron, uh, uh, higher electron channel concentration. In this structure, without doping, the current cannot flow in gun or in our gun. Those are insulating materials. It, yeah, the intrinsic concentration is to the Very power of minus 10. Many. So I can, I can imagine that those layers are insulators. And they only have that small red line that is conducted. Ideally, oh. yes. I wish it was Ideally, like that, yes. but Ideally, uh, it's yes. not exactly like that. Ideally, well, yes. Then, yeah, this yes. is why potentially it's very powerful as a, as a structure. And yes, the current flows only in this confined quantum well. So it's a sheet, uh, sheet. <laughs> sheet <of> line. <laughs> the line. The, 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 the KDS only flow horizontally in just one mobility. Yes, yes. That's why also the mobility is very high. It's not that easy. No, but if you think about the values of mobility in the gun itself, it's around 700. 
which is not higher than silicon, which is 1,300 something. Uh, but it reaches 2,000 just because of the, of the, of the, the structure itself and the piezo polarization of the material. Uh, um, on date, these are um, what I have here, it's just some schematic characteristics of the uh, both transfer characteristics, which is IDVG, and output characteristics. So you have the IDVG, uh, uh, which is on the, the device, which is on for negative gate um, voltages, and um, it opens, uh, uh, the, the, this dropping in the current is because the Schottky gate uh, has been uh, switched on. So as soon as the, there is current flowing into the gates, the current uh, through the drain decreases abruptly. And this is what you see if you go uh, for higher, uh, for two height. And the, 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 this value is around one volt in general. So we're taking minus two or minus 2.5 on the threshold voltage and one volt as an opening of the Schottky contact. Um, the electron current as is abrupt and flows through the two deck and uh, um, laterally from the source to the uh, drain or according to the convention from the drain to the source. Um, and these are the family of the characteristics. So it looks exactly as a, uh, as a, as a, as a, as a FET, I, I would say, so field effect transistor. It's just that it's based on this uh, heterostructure and on the properties of the, of the GAN. One thing we have to mention, and I have to go back a little bit into the physics for doing that, is the origin of the two-dimensional electron gas. We have seen that we have a very high electron concentration in the, in the device, but it's, um, if you calculate that charge uh, just accordingly to the polarization charge and the electric field in the structure, and then you measure your device and the onset resistance, and then the, from that you extrapolate the actual value you have in the device, most of the cases you have even higher concentration of electrons than the one predicted by theory. The reason of that is because you have, I think, let me go uh, back just one second. You have this interface between the silicon nitride and the gun cap or the algon, depending on which is the layer at the top. You have this interface, which is uh, crucial, it's very important. What uh, uh, sits at this interface are, um, in most of the case, the uh, defects. So these defects, which are also called uh, traps, are donor-like traps. Now, I don't know how much familiar you are with traps, but you can imagine them being um, uh, uh, being at an energy level from the conduction band, for example, as it is here, it being a reservoir of carriers, if it's donors, as soon as they have enough energy to get ionized, which means to release the electrons from this energy level to the conduction band, then they are providing electron to the, to the structure. And this providing of electrons will, will reinforce the two-dimensional electron gas. This is one of the theories related to the very high uh, concentration of electrons in the channel. You can have all kinds of distributions of, of donors. Uh, the simpler one is the uniform, uh, is the single level, which you have on the uh, left-hand side picture. So you have just one energy level of carriers beneath the conduction band, uh, providing electrons. And uh, uh, one which is a little bit more complicated is a uniform distribution in energy, which you have, uh, which you have there. So you, you will have the ionization of, of these traps depending on the on the voltage drop at this, uh, at this interface. Um, why they are so important? We don't have to forget that we're talking about wide band gun material, so you, don't, you won't have many electrons coming from the balance band to the conduction band thermally ex excited because the band gap for the algon is around, mm, for concentration of 0.2 is around 4.3. Um, uh, for the aluminum nitride is 6.2, so it's even higher. Uh, why, if you have uh, energy levels, let's say 0 0.2, 0 0.4 from the conduction band, then you need much lower energy to have excitation of um, uh, electrons from the uh, energy from the donor energy level to the conduction band. Uh, so now we can understand why we have um, why this um, equation gives you uh, this value. Uh, which is much better than the one for silicon carbide and silicon uh, and silicon based devices. We have high electron mobility. Why do we have it? I think now should be clear. We have lots of electrons in the two dimensional electron gas, not scattering with any uh, with any dopants and uh, being confined in that quantum well which was uh, shown before. 
uh, we have a high electron concentration and the critical electric field is higher because of the wider band gap of the material.